good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, lots of things to do before we start on the first application. Actually, a planning officer is trying to get some photos in from one format into another. So if he doesn't arrive before I finish the preamble, we, we will wait for him just to, just to do that. Right. Firstly, welcome to everybody. And a few things of housekeeping first. First of all, if the alarm rings, it is uh, a genuine alarm, it's not a practice. So please go out the way either you come in or, or through the outside entrance just there for the more able of us. <laughs> and that's not me. Uh, please switch your mobile devices to silent so they don't ring, please. Um, there's a pretty bill of pain, five or ten pounds if it rings, so I should make sure they're silent. Um, the proceedings are being recorded. Uh, speakers will have three minutes, and after that, you'll be you'll hear a tone and ask to wind up. Um, I usually give you about another 25 seconds. If you don't wind up by then, you'll just be told to wind up. Okay? Please don't clap, hiss, boo, cheer, or whatever to to any speakers. And during the meeting, you'll see officers talking. Certainly on my right, probably on my left. It looks like they're bad manners. It's bad manners because you'll be talking, they'll be talking as well. It's only to get answers so that you'll finish, when you finish talking, the officers can answer the points that you raise. So it looks rude, but it isn't. Um, I think that's the main thing. Some more to tell to members now. First of all, the update on the performance targets. Um, we're still achieving, we've achieved now 84%. Uh, uh, of dealing with applications on time, and that's exceeding the 40% target. The other um, measure that we're looking at, which is to do certain applications within a certain, uh, sorry, which is overturned on appeal or maybe overturned on appeal in ages, um, it's still the same as last time. Uh, four have been reversed, and if another 11 are lost by next September, we lose our planning power but there are several in the pipeline at the moment. But it's still okay, but there's an element of caution there. Um, right, two things to tell you, um, that's to remind members, and some members weren't here last time, about proposals. If you make a proposal early on in the debate, um, let's say that's contrary to an officer's view, uh, make sure you follow that proposal with, but of course, I should be listening to everything else before it comes to the vote on the proposal, okay? Then it is perfectly okay. But if you say that early on and, and look as if you've got a fixed mind on something, it's not right. So you've got to keep an open mind. And the other thing to tell you is, you know there was a bit of a debate last month about affordable housing at Woodford Holtz. Um, and there was a, perhaps a difference of opinion between members and officers. Well, I think we've sorted it out, and this is the position. Don't want to debate it now, just to say the position. Yes, um, local need surveys are taken to, into account and can be looked at, especially in larger villages. But if a large village has another large village next to it, it doesn't take into account their housing. Um, housing needs. If there are several small villages together, yes, they can be considered together. So that hopefully will clarify the point and will help when we get to more training. But I think that's all the preamble. Um, for next we go to the planning minutes. Is it your wish I sign them as a true and correct record, please, members? Is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. Yeah, thank you. I better do it. <laughs> Apologies for absence. Councillor Parker, Councillor Irving and Councillor Randall. Any more councillors? Okay, members interest. Disposable interests. None? Party weapon arrangements. Mm -hmm. To members of the public, that's people that the same party, they don't club together and vote together and discuss things before them. Never have done and uh, I hope never will. Right. 
exciting on the agenda is the application. And the, the first application is born in Killsby. Over to you, Ken. Oh, sorry, Catherine. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Members will recall this site from the Jeans, end of Jeans Planning Committee, which members deferred for an independent highway advice in respect of the highway mitigation measures proposed. This is an outline application for residential development. All matters are reserved except for the access. The A361 will have to be altered and vegetation that is proposed to be removed to create the visibility space. The site has not got any landscape designations nationally or locally. It is considered that the proposal will not have an adverse impact on the character, locality or the village. The, there is a potential that the development could lead to an enhancement of the village. The Highway Authority has no objection to the proposal and the independent highway consultant, Peter Kelly from Bagcow, has given advice to conclude that the central res refuge is the most appropriate safe pedestrian crossing facility and the proposed junction does meet the requirements of safety. Mr Kelly is actually here if members have got any specific queries on highway matters. As a result, there is no evidence by the council's highway consultant, both independent or the county, to sustain a reason for refusal based on highway grounds. The advice has been done in accordance with the request of the planning committee. Although the site is considered to be outside the confines of the village against the development plan policies, other material considerations weigh in favour of the proposed development. It is considered that the development would result in a sustainable form of development as a whole. The proposal is therefore recommended for approval in accordance with the report for you. Members' attention is drawn to late representation. Also, in regards to these late representations, especially in regards to the parish council's request for monies, they have to be considered against the test in the MPPF and SIL. The council has adopted SPD on infrastructure developer contributions, which sets out the need for contributions for particular developments. The council currently does not have a SIL scheme. Additional information has been requested to justify the requirements in order to consider if they, require, if they meet the strict tests. At the present time, it's considered we are not able to pro progress the majority of the parish's request as no justification has been submitted to determine whether they meet the test. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. We have three speakers. First of all, Mr Lang, who's against it. You have Thank three minutes, sir. Thank you. I have chosen the photographs because they bring a prescient element to the debate. Whilst only a moment in time, they have the quality of foreknowledge. They show the future. Just as my photographs are transient, so too is the supporting evidence of the Highways Agency. This taken together with the independent survey will crucially determine your decision. This application should not be examined on what is already a historic glimpse of the A361 in the immediate vicinity of the proposed development. Rather, consideration should be afforded to the certain adverse impact that will occur in the near future and will in turn bring great stress to the community of Killsby. You will surely reach the conclusion that this ill-conceived opportunistic proposal should be refused. You are the custodians of our heritage. It is right and courageous, therefore, that you should take into consideration the significant pressures already suffered by Kilsby through the Durft project. <coughs> to this, we must now add Durft 3 and the so-called rugby extension, some 6,200 houses and the size of Bradley. It is worth remembering that currently the government is actively promoting creation of three new garden cities, each to comprise some 15,000 homes. Hence my expression, so-called rugby extension. It is not hyperbolic to suggest that these two developments alone will bring an enormous, not to say unbearable increase to our road traffic on the A5 and A361. All the while, Kilsby has no relief road, nor is one likely. To my, it is my duty to remind those concerned of the law of unintended consequences. We are alarmed that the big picture is not part of this critical decision. 
we are along the juxtaposed as we are on the county boundary, we are in danger of falling between two stools. We are along the planning officers freely concede that they are minded to approve applications which conflict with safe planning policy. We are alarmed that sustainability is used to justify this contradiction. We are alarmed that we have been unable to understand the meaning of sustainability when applied to housing. To paraphrase Warren Buffett, I never invest in something I don't understand. Finally, we are mortified when planning regains its balance with the completion of the core strategy, planners will be able to return to a regime which will quite properly reject such unwarranted applications. But too late, I'm afraid, for us. Mind the Gap has never resonated so loudly. We urge you to protect our villages from these cynical and opportunistic proposals. We hope that you recognize that the provision of a refuge for crossing the A361 is hardly an able demonstration of sustainability. It is somewhat daunting to picture parents and their children, or any villager for that matter, stranded on the A361. We doubt whether it will be equal to its definition, i.e. a place of shelter or protection from danger. Kilsley is not opposed to development, as its residents do feel entitled to protection and care that its status as a designated infill village should afford. You want thank, to, uh, thank you. Sir. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Dunn, Parish Council. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start from my boy referring back to the letter that came from Chris Heaton of Paris, uh, where he stated that Kilsby is already overloaded with HGV traffic as a result of the developments at Durf, and Durf 3 is also on the way, along with the rugby urban extension, which, whilst not under the control of DDC, is nevertheless going to have a further significant highways impact on the area. The 6,200 houses on the VT site, as I've said previously, is three times the size of Long Buckby, and the first phase starts next year uh, with 600 homes, which again is one and a half times the size of Kilsby. The A361 already has an accident severity ratio of 42.86%, compared with the national average of 19.71%. Granting permission will therefore only exaggerate the matters on the road which carries 17% HGV traffic. Furthermore, if approved, anyone who bought a house in this development would have to cross the A361 to access village services, a further road safety hazard. The A361 is a red route currently being assessed by the County Road Safety Partnership as between Kilsby and Welton Crossroads, a six mile stretch has had 14 accidents recorded by the police and many more not recorded over the last three years. We're very concerned that pedestrians standing in the middle of the road which take 70% HGV traffic will take their life in their hands. I got a copy of soil a note from uh, Peter Kelly which uh, went to uh, Eamon and the almost the last program, pro, sorry, the last paragraph is, however, I can also see why the residents have highlighted this development, which needs to get pedestrians across a busy 30 mile an hour road, but with traffic, traffic travelling at 37 to 40 miles an hour. So we've already had an admission that there is speeding traffic down there. The main conflict with the MPPF identified in respect of achieving sustainable development is the ability to access village facilities across the A361 and impact on the character of the village by the suburbanizing effect of the proposed alteration to the 361 to accommodate the proposed access arrangements to serve the site, including the right turning lane and central pedestrian refuge. If this application is conflicted with both the NPPF and the Save Local Plan policies, how on earth can the officer be recommended for approval? We stated last time when we came that whilst we see well, we did see the drawing up there of the entrance to the site and the top of the banks. Our view is that we know at the moment we will not get a roundabout, uh, sorry, a, a bypass, but we would like to see a roundabout on the A361 and the entrance to the site to be opposite the banks so that there can be one roundabout there to slow down the traffic, allowing people to leave the banks and also to leave the new development. Also, 
also we will be looking, if possible, for a pedestrian, uh, sorry, a, um, a pelican crossing, so that people from the new development will be able to cross the road. Bearing in mind that uh, some of these photographs which were taken lunchtime, you will see there is a lot of HGV traffic there. And to go across that road, 40 houses is a proposal, assumedly 40, pair, uh, 40 families, maybe 20 children, <coughs> I don't know, will be attempting to cross that road at 9 o'clock in the morning to try and take the children to work. And so right. what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is please consider the safety aspect of this development. We believe it's completely and totally wrong on a major A road to put an access to the uh, uh, development in such a position. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I must put your right on one thing, having lived in London all my life. Yes, sir. 3,500 would be three times the amount of housing that was in London because it's 1,750. You've got 6,000? Sorry, 6,200, sir. Okay, I'll put it to 3,500. No, 6,000. There's 1,750 in London. Okay? Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Taylor, the agent. Chair, members of the Planning Committee, I'm grateful for the opportunity to address you this evening. I'll endeavour to keep this brief. I hope there is a common consensus that following the committee on the 25th of June, the only issue between the Grants Planning Commission here today is the issue of the access arrangements and the element or the safety aspect associated with it. We have before you, as your officer has pointed out, a letter from BCAL Consulting, and I believe the officer is here today. I will just read for you the conclusion, um, just in case anyone hasn't had the opportunity to read this letter. The proposed junction type is shown to meet the requirements of the local highway authority, exceeds the minimum required geometric standard set out in the design manual for roads and bridges and has a safety audit which has not raised the crossing of the A361 by pedestrians as an issue. I, that is the author of the letter, considers that due to the particular circumstances at this location, a central refuge island is the most appropriate safety pedestrian crossing facility. The application access junction accommodates this crossing facility and hence the development proposal provides a safe pedestrian crossing of the A361. I, again the author of the letter, consider that it would be extremely difficult to argue that the proposed junction did not meet the requirements of safety for pedestrians crossing the A361. End of quote. As such, there is no rational highway safety ground upon which to refuse planning permission here today. I submit that the site and the urban area to which it is adjacent is a sustainable location, and the site is well related to the built-up framework of the village. The site is capable of accommodating a proposed scale of development without significant adverse planning consequences that might otherwise amount to sound and clear-cut objections to the Grants and Planning Commission. To this end, your planning officers consider this application amounts to sustainable development, with there being no specific policy within the framework that tell against the Grants Planning Commission for housing on this site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, local member who wishes to speak under the tree, please, Madam Chair of the Council. Thank you, Chair. They say it's safe. <coughs> Ironically, the prison speed cameraman visits free Kilsby frequently. It sits outside the cemetery on the A5. Many times it's been suggested that the van should yet actually go to the A361 and check speeds there. They can't. And what's the reason? Because it's not safe to park the van there. No safe place to park, but it's safe for pedestrians. It's safe for pedestrians to stand in front of a line of right-turning vehicles in the middle of the road waiting for a gap in the traffic. Some reminders you've already heard from Mr. Dunn that in fact the A361 is a red route, and that's a red route from the roundabout at the junction of the A361 and the A5. Back in 2000, and I quote this to show you that this is actually a very long standing problem, back in 2000, on the 25th of July, 
the county council did a traffic count. The results were on the A361 northbound over a 12 hour period, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., there were 3,353 vehicles. Southbound towards Daventry, there were 3,484 vehicles. So that's an average for every hour during that period of 279 vehicles an hour. Northbound and 290 southbound. And HGVs comprise 17% of that total. Safe? I think not. Kilsby has done its own survey and in fact you have it before you this evening. It's only a snapshot survey but it shows an hourly average throw, flow at those times of 422 vehicles, 576 vehicles, a smaller figure of 364, which is mid-morning on a Sunday, and 748 at peak time in the evening, which will be four commuters. HGVs, lorries and vans account for 21% of the total. And this is in the school holidays when traffic is light. And they say it's safe. They say it's okay for pedestrians. And I refer you now to the independent BCAL consultant's letter of the 21st of July, to which the agent has already referred, Appendix A in your papers. Under application transport assessment, it refers to 85% of vehicles travelling northbound at 37.5 miles an hour and southbound at 40.3 miles per hour. When I last looked, that in a 30 mile an hour zone was a criminal offence. No rational reason to refuse. And they say it's safe for pedestrians. Provision for a safe crossing? I think not. The officer in the report refers to this as being a small-scale development. I would remind you that it actually equates to 9.8% increase on Pillsbury's housing stock. So it's not all that small-scale. There are also a number of other developments in the, um, in the pipeline which actually show that the development, if approved, would together with the, the with the smaller developments at the junction, um, that would increase it to 9.5%, and shortly we'll be considering an application for 99 houses. All three together would represent a 28% increase in housing stock. So it's hardly small scale, taken as a whole. Kilsby is no hub village. It has narrow roads, horrendous for parking, it's already a rat run. It has inadequate economic infrastructure and limited social infrastructure. No medical facilities and a full school. Can such an increase in housing stock be sustainable development? No more than 12% increase was originally envisaged for rural villages when we were looking at the um, countryside and settlement local plan. Well, we don't know now, of course, what's going to come out of, of that in due course after the course strategy is um, approved, which hopefully it will be. However, that was for the largest villages, 12% increase for the largest villages. But Hillsby isn't a Moulton or a Bricksworth or a Longbutby or a Woodford Holst. So, you know, what are we doing with Hillsby? I ask you to think mainly about the traffic and most importantly the road safety and that is paramount so please reject this application chairman i have a letter from the county council and you allow me to refer to it thank you i'll be quick i won't read it all no. you wanted me to read it all I'm just in the fact that that would be perhaps taking liberty but he does want to make his and um, RMP's positions clear on this one. He refers to the scale of development 
and um, that the surge of applications in the pipeline will swamp Kelsey and its current amenities. As far as sustainability is concerned, he makes the point that in fact a strain will be put upon village amenities if all these applications go through, to the detriment of the existing villages. As far as the traffic danger is concerned, he says that anyone wishing to gain a proper understanding of that danger, of the traffic on the 361, has only to sound and observe for a matter of minutes to gain a full appreciation. And we should not, as councillors, be party to allowing a known danger to be inflicted upon the villagers. He also points out that limited development is welcomed within the village, but the prospect of large-scale development is widely condemned. And he closes by saying, we as councillors should respect and support the views of our constituents when they are so widely and strongly felt. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my name is Ed Fazi. Um, I believe it was uh, discussed at the last meeting, but uh, on page 14, the proposal or the first sentence affordable housing, no garage space, um, which was a comment um, in the light of um, Middlemore tinting, recently built in Damitry. I think it highlights the need for off-road parking. I do appreciate that this is an enclosed estate, inverted commas, um, but one has to consider um, off-road parking for emergency vehicles. Um, I, um, as I say, I have empathy with uh, the local members. On page 24, um, uh, 25, the councillor um, Atterbury has um, viewed his concerns um, along with Chris Eaton Harris. Um, the comments there, the 361 is unsafe, having an higher accident rate. Well, the accident rate could be there, it could be uh, wherever on the 361. It's quite a long road and it's uh, a notable uh, rat run for those vehicles leaving dirt um, and want a quick way to the M40 south. Um, I don't blame those vehicles with the current price of fuel, etc. Um, I, I would use it myself. Um, I go to page 31, um, Chairman, if you bear with me, where it talks about pedestrian safety. Um, in the second to last paragraph, in my view, the agencies are necessary to afford safe access to and from the site, afford pedestrian accessibility to and from existing police facilities, this road and the main link between Damitry N1 via the A5 does not carry or does carry a lot of traffic. Quite rightly so, it does carry a lot of traffic. When I look out my um, landing window, I can't see the cars, but I can see the HGVs. And we're talking about 50 ton vehicles trundling along um, the road. I would then like to move, Chairman, to page 39. Um, where we're talking about the speed surveys. And the speed surveys are of the Health Consultant. Um, um, clearly say that you know the, the vehicles are exceeding the speed limit. Um, again, the problem that I have is modern cars can stop. 50 ton vehicles find it very, very difficult. So I, I personally would, would question that. And the fact that um, on page 40 um, in the survey, they're, they're suggesting that a central refuge um, would be the right way for a mother, child, buggy um, to cross that road. Um, I would like uh, those that have compiled the survey to give it a shot. You know, I'm not being disrespectful to them, but the moment you open a road up and you have a right-hand turn, that in itself increases the traffic. 
Um, in conclusion, on page 42, what, what is taken into account in the survey is the existing so uh, the existing traffic count. It doesn't take into account the predicted. Had the predicted count have got it right, <coughs> then the M25 would have been wider. The M1 M6 junction would have, would not need to be uh, modernised the way that it is. The A43 would be uh, a godsend to drive on. And five years ago, I suggested at a meeting um, with the transport people that the M1 northbound should have four running lanes. I was laughed at. Today's announcement is saying that they are going to have four running lanes going north. The message, clearly, Chairman, is that with traffic and traffic speculation, they're talking about today. They're not talking about tomorrow. They're not talking about thousands of houses being on the BT site. They're not talking about many, many distribution warehouses being along the A5. Chairman, I would sincerely like the members to condition a safe pedestrian crossing against the recommendations of the independent report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Um, Councillor Patrick, next. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I, I also have a great deal of sympathy for the residents of Kilby. Um, I mean, I've sat here in, in my ward of Woodford and, and had the same arguments about what, what developments here. Can you uh, speak well, up a little bit? Sorry. The, the, um, the, the Councillor Lomax is talking about cumulative impacts. Um, I think until those applications to this committee we, um, and approve, we, we can't really take them into account in planning terms, I, I don't think. Um, I, I, when I read through the papers, I was a bit uh, sceptical about the public benefit of this uh, proposal, and I, I see that the parish council has made a few suggestions, but um, they, these have all been rejected for one reason or another. But I, I, I do um, share my colleague, Councillor Paul's uh, consideration of the fact that there should be a public crossing and um, should, should uh, everybody and members decide to approve this application according to officer's advice. I think that the conditions should be attached, that the public crossing should be provided irrespective of the cost and the number of people who are likely to uh, use it. Um, one sort of anecdotal thing that um, comes to mind here is just down the road on the A5, we rejected a proposal for a car park on the caravan side just, just down the road um, on the grounds of highway safety, but that was overturned by appeal. So I, uh, is, we feel Inspector Roberts is to visit the site and try and cross the road um, on his own. Um, that's all, Chairman, really. Okay, I'll, I'll oppose on that last point. He did visit. Right, Councillor Ed, next. He didn't try and cross the road, I'll <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, just want to ask a question for clarification in a way. Because if you go <coughs> down towards the roundabout, down through Kilsby, on that same side of the road, there's a few houses. But when you get round the corner, you come to Monfield Close. Now, I think there's about 30 odd houses at that close. So all those people must have to cross the road to get to the village. I hadn't heard one person mention any difficulty in crossing the road there. So if anybody can cross the road there, with this in, in position as well, if it goes through, I don't see a problem there either. Thank you, Councillor. Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting when this was discussed, but apparently it was just deferred because of the, uh, the um, problem with the road safety. Um, the report from the... Um, the report from the... Highway mitigating about highway mitigating matters come through. Um, they they don't they don't seem to think that it's safe to have a pelican crossing or a uh, pedestrian crossing for one reason or another. They seem to think that the a refuge in the centre of the road is the answer to the problem. I don't know whether we can say that we want a pelican crossing when 
time when it seemed that it would be more dangerous for people just to not with refuge. Um, but I think if there are any problems with that, that will have to come back to highways or, some, or to this council somewhere if people are having a problem getting across the road. I don't think that we can, we, we can really turn this down on the safety aspect because we have the answer from the transport office. Thank you, Councillor Luke. Thank you, Chairman. Every so often, the members of this planning committee have a really difficult decision to make. Quite often they're not difficult, but this one I think really is difficult because uh, from the planning point of view, setting aside the uh, emotive almost statements that we've heard about traffic and so on, from the planning point of view, we have to bear in mind that although we might argue that we can show an adequate supply of land over five years, we do not have an up-to-date plan. So our position against national policy is very weak. We cannot cite our um, 1997 policy which says we, can't, we would rather not build in the open countryside and expect it to carry any weight, I'm afraid. Um, as regards the safety factors, all of the statutory consultees seem to be satisfied that this is an appropriate development and that it meets all the necessary requirements. Now you can argue as much as you like that they didn't attend at the right time of the day or the right day of the week, but nevertheless, that is the position that we face. Those are the opinions which will be brought for example, if, uh, if this was refused and taken to appeal, those opinions would be weighed very heavily in favour of the appellant under those circumstances. Uh, and for those reasons, among others, uh, we are presented with a report which shows that the officers recommend approval of the uh, application because they can't find a reason to not support it. We did defer it before, and we asked for an independent traffic consultant's report, which we now have, and that comes to the conclusion that uh, this is a safe and sustainable development because there is accessible room from this development to the rest of the village. We hear arguments about the traffic speeding. I know that, I've seen it myself. Unfortunately, that's not a planning matter. It's a matter for the police. Uh, I would, of course, accept that the introduction of a controlled crossing would help to slow the traffic down. And so it is something that perhaps should be seriously considered. But taking everything into consideration, I cannot find a reason to do other than propose that we follow officers' advice and grant this permission. Thank you, Councillor Chalmers. Do you have a record? Councillor Paul. Yeah, I'll, I'll be second it on, on the very reasons that, that, that Councillor Chandler has said. You know, we, we have special advice, professional advice, that is telling us that everything will be well. However, uh, I believe that through your powers, Chairman, um, I think we need to call um, a meeting between all parties regarding the 361, um, which was going to be downgraded at one time. Um, repeatedly it's, it's mentioned in here that it's a trunk road. Um, we cannot refuse the application. We can only offer our sympathy. Thank you, Chairman Paul. Uh, I know the officers want to come back on a few points that were made. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in regards to sort of the meeting, I know that there's the Junction 80, what's, what's known as the Junction 18 Forum, in which um, different authorities get together, highways agency, parishes, the police, the local highway authority all get together um, to speak about the issues. And I know sort of highways is one which is regularly um, brought up at that meeting, as I, as I understand. Um, in regards to sort of the type of pedestrian crossing, we've got to also consider what's reasonable in the sense of the size of the development, but potentially Mr Kelly can sort of give further guidance <coughs> on this aspect. Um, but in his, his uh, consideration and conclusion, 
asked by Dermot Tree to look at this particular scheme and I produced my report. When I first was asked to look at it, I thought, it doesn't feel right. What you try and do, you have when you're a highway engineer, you have things like junction strategies. You try and keep junctions the same along the section of road. It means that as a driver, you, you have an understanding of what type of road you're on and what kind of junction you come, come, come on. Particularly in a, a village environment, you don't want too much of a highway influence. The government now is trying to take the influence of highways out of living spaces. And that's the policy. So to see a right turn lane in this particular location in the village seemed to be wrong. So I started looking and thought, there's got to be a better way. And I went through all the documents, documents that you've never heard of. Um, I don't bring them along because they're too big. Uh, they're, they're the design standards for pedestrian crossings. And I went through the fine tooth cut and I looked at all the op options, all the alternatives because I wanted to have a single carriageway coming into the village, keep things narrow, try and keep speeds down. And so I thought, zebra crossing. You can't have a zebra crossing where speeds are 40 miles an hour. You've got to be down to about 35. You're not down to 35, you've got 40 at the moment. And although you can put signs up, you can put flashing signs, it makes very little difference. It usually takes about two or three miles an hour off the speed. But we're above this, I wouldn't want to put a zebra crossing here, speeds are too high. Good point, speeds are not a planning issue, it's a, it's a criminal offence, it's a police issue. And there's nothing that I as a highway engineer can do to make people stick to speed limits. I've got to try and make my roads as, as, as slow as I can. That's what I'm going to try and do, because I've got to try and influence driver behaviour. So, zebra crossing is out. Next one. Pelican crossing, signals. Very dangerous when you've only got a few people crossing because the vast majority of the time the lights are on green and drivers are asleep. Drivers will keep going through there even if the thing is on red and there will be an accident, a bad one. So zebra crossing is out, signalized crossing is out. So what am I left with? I'm left with trying to get people across this busy road as best I can. And the guidance says a central refuge. That's what we've got. It feels wrong, but if you go through the, the standards, if you go through the design, that's what you end up with. And that's what my report is recommending. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I know Mr. Chairman, members, and concerns and the concerns of speakers about speed, um, there is um, some redress that we could do through the community safety partnership because there is a road joint action group. If there is ongoing concerns about the speed on roads, then there's no reason why we can't refer it to that group for consideration. The police, highways, and the partners. So if there's something we can do, um, short and long term, about um, you know reducing the speed along that road. Just to chip in, Chair, there was a device three six one meeting. Thank you. 
still see them there. No, so I think there's a definite difference between when you've got traffic lights there and, and, and not. Uh, and I mean, I, I personally like to have that as a condition to the affordable uh, plans. You could do, but what you prefer, the county council don't want it. Our independent traffic consultant doesn't want it either. And well, I think if, if, the, if the applicant doesn't like it, he can always appeal against it. This is the condition that happens for us. And they could Can, can we put on, put on in place a planning condition that's unreasonable? Well, clearly, in the place of our own, our own advice from both the statutory council between the county council and our own independent consultant, to make the such a condition will clearly be unreasonable. I simply want to point out, Chairman, that there is apparently evidence that the traffic is exceeding the speed limit, and so I don't think there's any question that there should be a discussion with, with the appropriate authorities. There must be. Um, right, well, we're coming to the... All I was it's going, a quick one. All I was going to comment is that um, uh, our officer is correct. Uh, the previous um, Chairman, Frank Wigg, did um, hold meetings with county... Um, and various other parishes, etc., regarding uh, the A361 from Kilbury through to um, Banbury. Um, it ended up as a talking shop. It would have been nice if the uh, recommendation from that would have went through to the Joint Court Strategy. Mm -hmm. But I see no reason why we can, uh, why we can refuse this application, Chair. Okay. I think it's probably fair, before we come to the vote, to tell people from Kilby that we're not, we are human, same as you, we recognise the problems with Kilby, mm -hmm. exactly the same as you do. Um, the trouble is we have to abide by a certain lot of rules that say we can't refuse something, although I would think every person in this room considers the traffic is bad in Kilby and thinks it's dangerous to cross the road, I don't think there's a person that doesn't, including officers. But, but you've got a substantive, you've got to argue against county council uh, and, and your independent man to, to prove it. So it's very, very difficult to refuse things when you, you, you statutory consultee is saying it's all right. I just thought I'd explain that because we're not as bad as we look, honestly. Um, right, members, there's a proposal that uh, officers advise be be supported, which has been duly seconded. All those agreement, please show us. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Those against? Right. Nine, one. The application is approved. Very relaxing. As the majority of people are from Kilby here, we'll break for a minute so that you can. Uh, obviously, you don't want to sit for the next meeting.
Until we continue, the next half again is in Barbie, 0432. Thank you, Chairman. This is an application for the construction of a pitched roof over a flat roof garage to a property in Barbie. Part of the work has, has been carried out. The main considerations of the proposal is the impact on the character of the local, locality and residential amenity. The proposal will not result in an adverse impact on the character of the locality. Other properties in the, in the close have got similar alterations. Residential amenity will not be detrimental impacted as a result of the proposed development. The main concern raised by local residents is the slight overhang to the adjoining neighbouring property. The applicants have completed Certificate B and in planning terms, it, the proposal is considered to be acceptable. The encroachment to the neighbour is a civil matter and not a planning matter. Members' attention is drawn to Lake Rep's representations. The neighbouring property on number seven has recently started development, um, which a planning application has been requested. This is, however, separate to the current application before you tonight. The application before you should be considered on its own planning merits. The application is recommended as for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. We have two speakers. Mr. Smith is against the application. Smith. Yeah, thank you very much. I am the neighbour who's been transgressed on. I oppose the development because of the trespass over our boundary line. Trespass includes airspace above the land, and hence the overhanging structure is trespass. The trespass took place with no consultation and included builders trespassing on our land against our wishes. Any indication this may happen again will result in police action that has already occurred and will occur if ever there is another intrusion onto our land. We appreciate ownership is not the main criteria in approving planning applications, but it is implicit in them. It must be possible to place a condition on approval such that the applicant must have written permission from us to continue with any part of the development which encroaches on our property. In fact, this is a legal requirement. We understand the council's position regarding the new guidelines issued to ease planning process. However, the spirit behind these guidelines is the encouragement of new house building and expanding floor space in existing homes. The applicant's development is neither this. He's placed a pitch roof on an existing garage and in doing so encroaches, i.e. trespasses, on our property. Setting up cross-boundary flying trespass cannot be acceptable. We are amazed by the reference in the DDC note to the size of a garden. That is surely not a planning consideration. The creation of a flying trespass is wrong in principle, no matter how large our garden is. Also, the suggestion by DDC to use a raised platform or cherry picket to complete the work is encouraging trespass over airspace. In any event, it would be impossible to use such equipment while they're out engaging in an unsafe act. The previous softness board, previous softness board attaching directly to the brick wall is significantly different to overhanging timber trussing with a fascia and guttering attached. We do not wish to see this every time we come outside our door. No, th no thought or consideration has been given to us as the property owners, nor it appears to the unanimous view, I stress the unanimous view, of Barton Parish Council, that includes two district councillors, one being the chairperson of GDC, and councillor Brian Lomax, who's had six years' experience on the planning. Surely their views and those of our neighbours who are against this cannot say that it's in the public interest and it's not right to encourage trespass. Yes, speculative planning is not unusual when all parties are in agreement. This is different as there's been blatant and illegal trespass over a boundary line with benefit to one person only, the aggressor. It's our opinion the council would be giving license to trespass unless the need to obtain such a license is included as a condition of the planning process. The statements, well, should planning be approved without such a condition, then we will make an immediate appeal. The applicant will need to obtain a license to enter our property. That's a recommendation from the EDC. The other issue is that the applicant stated that the previous flat roof cannot be amended and as such uh, will have to remain. There are many flat roofs, I would say, within Rectory Close. Furthermore, there is an alternative. 
The structure need not return to a flat roof as stated. <coughs> Even at this stage, it is vital for the overhang to be cut back to the boundary, a box cutter to be installed on the applicant side, thus eliminating the trespass. Confirmation for this has been given to me by a local builder. Also, Mr. House indicated in writing that if he gets planning, he will just go ahead. I anticipate approval will be granted and will proceed to complete the structure, blatant trespass. It's hoped the planning application will be declined <coughs> and the alternative of putting a box gutter and cutting back the, the uh, trespass will be accepted, and in which event we will not oppose such an application, but we will continue to fight against this blatant trespass. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. House, the applicant. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for holding this opportunity to address uh, your committee this evening. Um, it's regrettable, in my view, that both Barbie and Omni Parish Council and Mr. Smith have sought to drag you into a neighbour dispute, which is indeed a civil matter, uh, by seeking to dress up this dispute as a valid planning uh, objection. This has caused your officers, and indeed this committee, unnecessary time and inconvenience. I'd like to thank your officers, Mr. Allen, Senior Planning Officer, and Mr. Dave Smith, the Planning Enforcement Officer, who have behaved with impeccable professionalism and courtesy in what must have been a difficult situation for them. And I'd ask Chairman if I'm able to, uh, to have that uh, recorded. The only thing I have to say is I consider that the report before you is fair and balanced, and that uh, I'm happy to uh, rest my comments at that point. Thank you, sir. Councillor Elmax. So to support the views, Chairman of the Parish Council, I think it's all very unfortunate. Uh, I have every sympathy, in fact, with the neighbour. However, it is under planning consideration. Thank you. Dr. Smithy, no. Thank you. Councillor Osborne. I think I'd like to make a... Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'd like to make a proposal that we agree with officers and advice on this. I'll listen, obviously, to everything else that's being said first, and make my decision after, but I'd like to make an application to this. Thank you. Do you have a second? Councillor Do you want to speak, yeah. Councillor No, no. Okay. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak? Councillor Paul? Uh, um, advice, really, um, Chairman, if I may. Uh, I'm looking at the picture. Um, it says that this planning application is retrospective. Mm -hmm. uh, how far did the building go before the planning application was in? But I'm looking at that gable end there, um, and you know, I question my own self. You know, they look to be like London flattened bricks, um, and don't look to match the existing. I, I accept that the, the existing has been weathered. Um, but I would probably think that if this had come uh, before planning uh, previously, they would have specified that the, the bricks would be compatible with the, the existing. Just to advise, Chairman. Uh, do you want to answer that, Catherine? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, sort of the, the, given the age of the properties, it's very difficult to get sort of matching bricks, especially if. Uh, development is, or the brick has, has ceased in production. So sometimes what you get is it very similar bricks. Um, it's the, also the garage is set back. It's not quite right in the front of some go down the street. So if we consider it, it, it is acceptable sort of in the council street scene. Um, yes, we normally do put matching materials on um, any application. Um, in regards to how far did it get on, in the sense, uh, it was a flat roof um, garage, now it's probably a pitched roof garage. Um, so yes, there are sort of difference, but it, it will weather in time. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. Yes, Councillor. Sorry, I forgot your name because you weren't there. I do apologise. No, I can't even say um, that. Just, uh, <laughs> <some questions. laughs> Councillor Smith. Thank you. I do apologise. Um, can we just go back to the picture of the bricks? Because to me, I didn't take it in, take it on board until we had the close up. But they don't, to me, look anywhere close to the mm -hmm. if, it, if it helps, Chairman, those bricks that house is built out of are a London brick anyway. The garage is built out of. Now that's a particularly nasty, in my point of view, yellow brick that they don't actually make anymore. So you can't. 
actually get a brick that will perfectly match that now, which is actually super production. And what the extension has been built, out, built out of is a London brick. So they've used the same type of bricks, but what they used to do was spray sand on and colour it to make the facings on the bricks, and they don't do the yellow one anymore. Some would say, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. um, right, we have a proposal that <coughs> officers advise to be supported and has been seconded. All those in agreement, please show. Those against? The application is approved. The next application is in Bridgeworth and it's 0479.
to obviously refute that pressure. I mean, we have previously had the parish council and the businesses and the residents um, opposing um, against this application, and it's been turned down, as I've mentioned earlier. And uh, I kindly ask um, that we uh, send by the uh, near, near, nearby the residents have the necessary planning notices and displayed properly, because obviously previously they put uh, proper planning notices up to the lamppost. This time around, we've never seen anything. We've never heard of the planning. Um, we've only just recently picked up that. Um, and the local residents and the business owners are not clearly aware of it. That it's, it's, it's been um, applied for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Coy is the agent. Oh, sorry, Mr. Coy isn't the agent for this one. It's the next one. Mr. Parnaby, Irish Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman and Councillors, Brixworth Parish Council objects to this application. Brixworth might welcome another option to take away, but not in this location. Twice previously, applications for change of user for a similar purpose have been made for these premises and refused. The premises are, in, are within the village conservation area, and whilst it is suggested that this business might be acceptable, subject to the protection of the amenities of nearby residents and the satisfactory appearance of the property, say the local policies GN2 and EN42 and the village design statement refer, we cannot see how this could be achieved. The premises face onto a row of pleasant, traditional Victorian houses, and their use for this purpose would involve visits by customers not only in the daytime, but also until late in the evening. Residents are bound to be adversely affected by this, and complaints have already been received concerning noise in this area from the two neighboring pubs. Litter's litter will also be generated. Parking will cause serious problems, as no dedicated parking area exists, and the premises are situated on a bend. Cars will tend to arrive at times throughout the evening, sometimes several at once. This business would be likely to encourage more random and indiscriminate parking and increase car numbers exponentially with attendant traffic hazards. Customers would be inclined to park in the adjacent red line car park, causing friction with the proprietor and his customers, which might be drink fueled. Access to residential property may also be impeded. Now, access to the rear of the premises is via a small gate over the red line yard. Takeaways generate weights and will require 500 litre bins. There is no space for these at the rear of the premises, so they are likely to be placed on the public footpath. Whilst the applicant assures us that waste disposal and deliveries can be achieved through the shop, we have no independent confirmation of this, nor have we any confirmation of successful negotiations with the red line to improve access to the car park. Safe policy EN42 seeks to ensure that crime prevention measures are considered. The police have concerns about antisocial behavior in this connection. Safe policy GN2 states that planning permission will normally be granted if it does not detract from amenities in the locality, has satisfactory means of access, and sufficient parking facilities, and will have no adverse effect on the road network. We believe that this application fails on all of these. The village design statement states that signs within the conservation area must be of minimum size to reduce their effect. Signs for a takeaway, most likely illuminated, will be obtrusive. In short, whilst this facility might be desirable elsewhere in Brixworth, it is certainly neither desirable nor suitable here. I respectfully ask that the voices of local people be heard and that the application be reviewed. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, local member, Dr. Barrett, wish to say anything? Thank you, Councillor Chairman. B. Thank you, Chairman. Yes. Um, I am concerned about this application, basically because of um, where it actually is. It's a very bad, there's a very bad thing just before you come to this particular property. Um, and parking there is extremely bad at the moment. Um, I do share the Crime Prevention Design Officer. Um, 
which back up those concerns. Um, I think it's in the wrong place. Um, and with you, you've got the red line on one side of it, you've got the George Pope the other side of it. Um, I can see it this um, you know, trouble, it's escalating from there. Um, but with that chairman for the moment, I'll pass it on to the House of Parliament. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, can I thank the uh, representative from the parish council for clarifying the fact they are, in fact, objecting to this? I think it's important to bear in mind that the parish council do have very expressed concerns previously. Now they have confirmed this objection. Um, yeah, the uh, crime prevention officer has um, uh, mentioned uh, the likelihood or lack of it of uh, antisocial behaviour in this particular case, and um, I think it makes great. Um, Please make great, um, uh, great thing of the fact that the pub will not be closed at the same time as the um, as the uh, takeaway will be. Therefore, there's less chance of crowds gathering. Knowing that the village life and the way things work in Brixwood, I think it's very likely that people will leave the pub early at 11 o'clock instead of staying on till half past 11 for the last drink in, in order to get a takeaway. And I can see there being many, many crowds of people frequenting this uh, the proposed shop in the middle of this residential area. And it is, as I'm saying, right next door to a pub. And so I can't say uh, um, that I agree with the um, crime prevention officer on that particular point. Uh, as far as the noise is concerned, or potential noise, yes, Brixworth has got three pubs. They're generally quiet, not always, not always, um, pubs are pubs, but they're generally well run and they have a large village clientele who use them. And any rare problems are contained within that pub, and the landlords are very good at sorting it out. It doesn't spill out into the street. In this case, any antisocial behaviour, low-level antisocial behaviour, maybe I'm not talking of riots, I'm talking of low-level antisocial behaviour, shouting, talking, and so on, will be in the street. Not easily contained. Now, Bricks was once known as the Wild West of the Davitry District. Uh, because of the antisocial behaviour we suffered many years ago outside the existing chip shop and co-op. Both are very well managed shops, there's no criticism at all intended of their management, they can't help who gathers outside. So much that Brixford Parish Council part funded uh, a police station in the village in an attempt to control it. They were the lengths we had to go to. And it was very successful. And the police and the CPSOs have worked very, very hard over the years to ensure that the antisocial behaviour, when it does occasionally flare up, that it is contained. And my concern is that this is making a second focus for such behaviour. Co-op and chip shop are next door to each other, with a private car park in front, you can contain any trouble there, it's well lit, you can see who's causing it. This is opening another front, more problem for policing, and that is my concern there. Um, parking, um, it has been, I think the subject has been uh, broached already, but it is worth mentioning that highways would normally do their surveying of car parking facilities, I would imagine, in the daytime. And in the daytime, there's many spaces people use in the shop coming and going, and there being no difficulty at all. Nighttime, there's a shortage of residential parking, like there are in most villages, and this area, the frontage of the shop, is used not only by people who live in the flats above the shop, but also by residents elsewhere in the village who use it for an overflow parking. There's not going to be empty parking spaces. It's going to be impossible for people to park, and maybe they'll double park, it's on a corner, we don't know. It certainly isn't very good for parking. Rubbish disposal. Now, originally, that was going to be through the um, the uh, property of the red line. It's worth remembering at this stage what Mr. Booker, the landlord, has said about this arrangement. As I understand it, he's contacted Enterprise Inns, the applicant has, and uh, concerning um, using car parking to the facilities of the red line next door, and also for routing the rubbish out in that direction. Mr. Booker is, in fact, um, the VC from Enterprise Inns, and he tells me he has control over who uses the property as long as he is the... Uh, rent payer, if you like, and he has no intention of allowing rubbish or car parking on his premises. So immediately we have two problems. The thought that rubbish will be brought through the kitchen, which is the only way it can be done, I won't comment on the possible hygiene possibilities there, I don't know about that. Um, certainly, um, it's, there's going to be a problem when it gets to the front door. What do you do with two large tins of rubbish that are waiting to be collected? There's a narrow pavement there, very narrow. Already it's being obstructed on there, you can see by some chairs for sale. 
what the bins are going to do. It hasn't been down through the front door. I do not know. It's a problem. It hasn't been reconciled. And I would say, councillors, it needs to be reconciled before we go any further in considering this application. So that is a problem there. We've had a petition, we're told, of 97 people. Some people are very cynical about petitions, but these are electors who have stated their, uh, their, their opinions and they've been brave enough to put their name on paper. I haven't seen the petition, but that has been presented to the council, I think so. So therefore, I would oppose this. I'm minded to oppose this application, Chairman, on the grounds of the uh, parking being insufficient and unsafe. The rubbish disposal arrangements, the possibility of antisocial behaviour, the noise and disturbance to nearby residents in the residential area, and finally, we're not shown where the exhaust flue from the kitchen is going. If it's bright stainless steel, as most of them are, it will be on an exposed side face of a cottage style building in the middle of a conservation area, and I'd say that also would not be acceptable. So, Chairman, although um, uh, my mind is not totally made up, it will take a very, very strong argument to overcome my present feeling of objection to this particular um, application. Do you want us to get the wording out of what you said, or do you want to think about it for a little while and put the wording down? Um, I'll, go, um, I will leave that to you, Chairman. Um, um, possibly I'll others leave, more expert than I may be able I'll to I'll leave you to jump in during the debate. Thank no, you. Nobody else will. Um, uh, Put the wording down that you want to do, and we'll take it for opposition then. Lovely, that's fine. Um, before we get the speakers, I'm going to tell you I'm a bit of an expert on, yeah, on takeaways. <laughs> okay. I was um, going to say what you're going to say, Chair, but thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just guiding you. you. You can take what you think. You can do what you think. But I live next door to a Chinese restaurant takeaway. I live 30 yards from a chip shop. 150 yards from a Chinese takeaway. Uh, Indian restaurant, well, Bangladesh restaurant, 100 yards away. It's away waste. An Indi another Indian restaurant, 120 yards away. Another Indian restaurant, again, are all Bangladesh ones, 175 yards away. Okay? When the first one came, it was opposed and it went to appeal for all the same things smell, rubbish, um, noise, and nuisance, and everything. But we've got an absolutely brilliant neighbour. Um, who runs his restaurant absolutely brilliantly closes on time and I am right next door do we have lines everywhere I would say every night there's about between the peak times of takeaways and people eating there's probably 8 to 10 cars illegally parked on WL lines because there is no parking without WL lines the Indian restaurant just along the road which was given permission on, the, on appeal is exactly the same. You can't bring the rubbish round from the back. It was given permission to bring it through the shop. Exactly the same as proposed here. Um, the only nuisance that I have found there, I don't, I'm just saying in my own village, it's going to be probably different in the other villages, there is virtually no litter that comes from these. You wouldn't believe that because you'd think there'd be tons of litter. Um, the only nuisance is people arriving and taking um, takeaways away. The, the, there is no other obvious problems. You think there'll be no, nuisance, noise, punch-ups, arguments, but they don't. They actually don't happen. But that's long but be. We have some very good Bangladesh restaurateurs and some very good Chinese restaurateurs. And um, I, I'm certainly happy with them, even living next door and that close to them. I say that, you you do what you like. Right, we've got Councillor Patchy first. Uh, I'll install my phone with the Chairman, so I'll, I'll leave it to that. Oh, you were going to say that, were you? Uh, Councillor Osborne. Yeah, I obviously, I was going to say that. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, Chairman, I'll be the hospital for the same thing, I think. Councillor uh, Luke. Well, Chairman, the, yeah, my main concern was the rubbish coming through the shop, but obviously that's been answered now. But I think some people will walk to this. Not everyone will be have a car, will they? So I think problems are exaggerated sometimes. And we often, as you've said, we've had these in the past. Um, all these problems are raised, but they don't very often materialise. So I think on balance, I would vote for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Council Osborne and Council Paul. So well, I will say something about the, the rubbish. Um, the one in Long Whitby, the one opposite the co-op, um, that was allowed on appeal, they were supposed to bring their rubbish through their restaurant, um, which they decided they weren't going to bother, and they put the bins on the road, which was making a nuisance for pedestrians. Um, I'm not sure whether that still happens at the moment. It changed ownership, Council Osborne, and now um, the new owner does it quite properly. Um, proper bin, out on bin day, brings the stuff through, and it goes out on the path and it comes back in. It doesn't yeah. cause any problems. I was just making sure, I'm just man. saying to people, yeah. this, goes through, this goes through the restaurant. We were in uproar about it when it first happened, but, but, it, but it happens there, so. Thank you. Right, Council Paul, sorry, Council. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I live probably 80 miles away from the nearest pie and mash shop. Um, um, so it doesn't affect good you. Good luck to you living next to all these takeaways. Um, I can't see any planning reason uh, not to approve this, and I would propose we accept opposite of all. Ah, no. I said I would take another councillor's proposal first. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I said I would let him. Yeah, but he did get a second. No, I, well, I didn't do it, but I still will. I, I, I still will go back. And I won't go back on my word. Would you withdraw that, Councillor Paul? Um, if it's a bio mash up, Chairman, yes. Yeah, I don't want to go back on my word. But would you like to put your proposition for refusal? Thank you. In your words, then. Simple, thank you. I would uh, propose, I propose that we uh, reject this application on the grounds of uh, inadequacy of parking, the in, uh, rubbish disposal uh, arrangements, any social behaviour, noise, and the visual conservation area. Okay, before I ask for a second, uh, the officers want to comment on some of the points you've made. Um, parking yeah. will be virtually. I was going to, Jan. Yeah, sorry, we're back. We're back again with not taking the advice of the county highway authority. Now, as you'll see from the report, I've raised no objection to this. So again, if you use parking, you're going to struggle to come up with something to justify that going up against the county council. Um, so I'm not happy with that. Rubbish, we've heard, and our environmental health officer has confirmed that it's perfectly acceptable to take the rubbish through the shop. As we've just heard, it happens elsewhere. Um, I'm happy enough with concerns about antisocial behaviour and noise and disturbance, despite the comments of the um, crime prevention officer who says about the hours conditions, I can accept that that could still be a concern. And it was refused previously, as has been pointed out by the speakers, and that was the grounds it was refused on before, basically, so I'm, I'm okay with that one. Uh, the flu, uh, which was mentioned, the load now being mentioned as a factor in conservation here as well, um, is conditioned anyway, that could be subject to the planning condition, I doubt there's something to do now. Is it also noise? Yeah. Noise would be a separate regime. I mean, noise from the flu, yeah, rather than noise and disturbance in the street. So do you want to modify your proposal in the light of what you I would like to withdraw the part of the visual effect on the conservation area. Okay. So that will be obviously dealt with at a later stage. Yeah. I would like to leave in the grounds of parking because the point I made was it was in the evenings we're talking about, not the day times. And the rubbish, I'd like to leave that one in as well because the problem wasn't just taking it through the premises, it's where do you put it when it gets to the front? Where do you put it when it gets to the front? You put it in the bin on bin day, which you're allowed to do for 12, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on the bill for the year to get into the obstruction side. Yeah, so we don't have to do that. We've got the same thing in the mm -hmm. bin. Okay, do you have a seconder for that proposal? I'm afraid you don't. Okay, okay Councillor Fangeman, you want to speak? Yes, I'd just like to clarify the point that uh, Mr. Thursfield said about uh, uh, N, uh, the statutory council T and NCC. I am very uncomfortable with the responses we get from NCC because on something like this, which is mainly used in the evening, and it clearly states that the opening hours are five till 11 in the evening, they will not have visited that site at that time. So their validity in terms of commenting on parking is nil. How do we get that point over to them so that in future that they actually take into account the actual problems that will occur on the site. So I mean, yeah, they, they didn't know the opening time, so they obviously made their comments accordingly. But um, I don't know, apart from give them some feedback really, give them a chance to um, respond to such an allegation. I 
But they're not particularly individually involved. Those have some local knowledge to prepare because they do have connections in the village. So I'm pretty sure they know what happens in the evening in the village. I'm going back to you now, Councillor Paul, because I asked you yeah, to Yeah, just, just a quick, because just a quick comment. Do you want to say that again? Just a quick comment, Chairman. I mean, how, do we, how do we not know that they were there during the evening watching the traffic? Um, equally as uh, good argument that was made. I, 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 see, I see no planning reason to refuse the Chairman. Therefore, I propose that we um, uh, approve with officer's advice. Do we have a second? Yeah, Chairman. Um, I could see a hand above um, a, a, a head, rather large head, and um, just here. <laughs> any, any, any other councillors want to comment on it? If no, not. We have a proposal that the application be approved, and which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Right, those against? <laughs> One, two, three. <coughs> no, you don't vote, for instance. Sorry? Yeah. No, no, I don't vote, sorry. And a member of the public. So, I don't vote for that. 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 Sure you've made it. Thank you. Um, now, Mr. Coy, I'll try to get you on, on the last one, but uh, you're on this <laughs> one, Mr. 
Yeah, Mr Chair, members of the Planning Committee, um, thank you for allowing me to address you this evening. Um, members will note that in accordance with the interpretation of policy, the site is considered to be an open countryside. However, the practical reality is that the site lies within the domestic heritage of Boxwood House and is bounded between Old Road, the original route through Braunston, and the bypass adjacent to the marina. We are also pleased to note that the officer in her report confirms that the Council have actively worked with ourselves in a positive and proactive manner to bring this application before you this evening, rather than simply determine the application under delegated powers. As there is, men as there is merit in determining the application contrary to the recommendation, particularly as we have heard the Parish Council also supports this application. I can also confirm that we've amended the plans to show the required pedestrian visibility space and dealt with the minor in inconsistencies referred to in the report. The West Northamptonshire Joint Corps strategy seeks to maintain the distinctive character and vitality of rural communities, which we believe this proposal will achieve, and advises that priority will be given to making the best use of previously developed land. The house is sited on the footprint of the former commercial kennels where some elements of the concrete foundation still remain. Members will note that the report refers to a planning commission granted for a new dwelling on the opposite side of Old Road, and a subsequent revised scheme was also recently approved. It is also noted in the report that it referred to the previous planning commission for the new dwelling as being innovative or outstanding to warrant consideration under paragraph 55 of the MPPF. However, this was concluded not to be the case in the final report, and the application is determined on its merits, incorporating low carbon credentials, as is the case here. In summary, Mr Chairman, your officer considers the design and siting of the house to be acceptable and not to cause any significant harm, either to its setting or surroundings. However, we acknowledge due to the interpretation of policy the reasons why the application is recommended for refusal. I'm sure after reading through the officer's report, members will appreciate that in essence this proposal is acceptable in principle and is therefore brought before you tonight in the light of policy interpretation and to ensure consistency to decide whether to grant approval. We hope that is the case as we believe this property will also make a positive contribution to its surroundings, make good use of brownfield land and add positively to local vitality. I think in conclusion, Mr Chairman, I would like to say that the officer that we have been dealing with this on this application has, has, has sought really hard to, to work with us on this and recognising that as with the other dwelling, that this one does have merit and is not in open countryside in the real terms. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Cooley. I should remind members, because she's asked me to remind members, that Councillor Campbell in late reps, it's on the very back page and the last few words on the third page. Um, uh, certainly she supports the application, which she can't plead in to say it verbally. Right, members. Councillor Luke. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, when the, the previous house was built recently, um, I voted with officers at advice of that, but the committee decided to uh, approve it and went through all right. So there is buildings on that land, and I can't, and because it was an, an innovative building, but isn't this one an, an innovative building? The officers have worked with it, it's a lovely building, it's a house for people to live in. It's on land that has already been put, or a site of where a house has already been put outside the contract plans of the village. I believe in the arguments of the parish council and the local councillor, and I would, um, George, uh, we're learning. Thank you very much. Do you have a second first? I can't for the same reasons. Uh, do you know what's going on there? No. Okay. Thanks for passing. Thank you, Chair. I'm surprised that, uh, that the office is not liking the design. It's not just because it's very artistic in the design. But um, uh, apart from that, uh, I, mean, I, I agree with, with my colleagues here that uh, I mean, if we're going to put 40 houses in, 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 in in the countryside, that then one next to a, a, a you know, other houses it shouldn't be a problem. We need to be more consistent with our decisions. So I, I, I believe that that's Thank you, Arthur. To be fair, the officers have been consistent with their comments because they've been against it. Yeah, yeah. The officers have been consistent with their comments because they did speak against the first one as well as this one. So they have been consistent. But you're right. 
you're being consistent <laughs> by voting against the officers on, on, on this one and last one. Which may be, yeah. That may be, yeah. <laughs> okay, anybody else wish to add? If not, we'll go to the vote. Can, oh, can I come back to one thing, please? Um, I really do get concerned and confused about these confines of the villages. I mean, if you look at, especially for instance, history, um, this was quite a busy part of Bromston, and it, it's always been part of Bromston. I'd love to know where the confines of this village actually are. Yeah. Well, no. well short answer is there isn't a line for most of the villages, as you know. And it's in that definition in paragraph 4.90, I think it is, in the local plan that says it's the main building buried for village, but it excludes peripheral villages, uh, sorry, peripheral buildings, things like that. So in our interpretation, obviously, this is a peripheral building or group of buildings that isn't in the main built of parts of the village. That's our interpretation. But that's not to say that you couldn't interpret that in a different way under that paragraph. The only villages that we've got um, compromised lines for, as you know, are the uh, village development villages like Ricksworth and uh, West Haddon, places like that where they have housing development built on the edge of the village. But the vast majority, yeah, it's open to interpretation. It's here. But, but this was once a very busy and built up part of the village. But when the canals changed and transport went on to railway and road instead of canals, a lot of it just fell into ruin. But you go back far enough, and this was a very busy part of the village, and it was built up, a lot of people lived there. But I just can't see why we keep saying it's outside. Well, then, a long time, you down to rural district council and built. Hundreds of council houses up Welton Road and Ashby Road, which balanced it further that way. Mm. And, um, yeah. Council Paul. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the word concrete was mentioned being on the site. Um, would this be regarded um, as a brownfield site in that instance? the application be approved and has been seconded. All those in favour please show. <coughs> those against? I'm still the last time because I'd be cast in vote on the last one. <laughs> well the application is approved. Yeah. Conditions? Conditions? What obvious conditions do you want? Submission of materials, uh, sort of details of or low carbon details as submitted. So the usual ones plus the low carbon yes. details. You, you don't have a problem with that? Can we leave it to the officer to sort yeah, out? Yeah, I would have sorted out. Are you happy with that? Okay. So the application has been approved subject to the, uh, subject to the materials. Okay. Sorry, Jake, can I just clarify something on that last one? One of the conditions will be that it's a low carbon. That's right. Lower, so if it's like a building code four or five or whatever it is. Well, because in, in the reports which the applicant and the agent submitted, there's a large number of um, initiatives which they were going to use. What we can do is use the condition to ensure that the measures which have been written down are carried out. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we move on to um, the enforcement of Malta. Thank you, Chair. As you'll see, this is a site. Yeah, so a platform has resulted in a tall, solid appearing tower 
quite irrelevant. It appears as a visually intrusive, poorly designed, and incongruous feature within the rural setting in which it is set situated to the detriment of the character and visual amenities of the local environment. Um, so that was our reason for refusal. That's the reason we brought this before you, because as you see, it, uh, it still remains. And although there's been no appeal against the refusal of planning permission, um, we feel that we need to move things on and uh, remove it. I would just say, in part the live representations, we have had some comments from Councillor Warren. <coughs> Some even later representation uh, from Chris Hinton Harris, the Member of Parliament. And he said, uh, I wanted to email to say that I have seen first hand the excellent work that Mr. Perryman undertakes with local young people providing a fine service to often troublesome teens. As such, it would be a shame if this work were impractical. Therefore, I would like to suggest that you consider a site visit of Adventure Wires with Mr. Perryman in order that you can see the structure in question in context. I do hope you consider this request after your meeting this evening. Um, well, we've got photographs of it and the applicants provided photographs of it. You've seen where the site is. It's up to you if you think you need a site visit, but I think you can say that it is visually intrusive and hopefully agree with us that it needs to be taken down. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have two speakers. Mr. Scott is in favour of the enforcement. First one. Good evening, Chairman and Councillors. Thank you for giving the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, let me commence by clearly stating I strongly support the um, officer's recommendation that enforcement action be taken against this structure, which I believe is totally out of keeping with the local rural locality in terms of scale, size, mass and position. It's actually referred to locally by neighbouring um, neighbours as the multi monstrosity. But what you're not clearly seeing from here, and obviously we're seeing things in full leaf, and I did circulate this round, I know it's in advance, so I'm allowed to show this, but this is the structure as you actually see it across the fields, you can actually see it right the whole way from Harborough Road as you go between Brixworth and Northampton. It is a sizeable structure, these are fully grown trees, obviously in the winter months, which we have a lot of here, that is in, you know, there's no way of, of hiding that. Um, the structure comprises two solid wooden walls, as the officers referred to. They're 13 metres tall, approximately 4 metres wide. That's the equivalent of a four-storey block of flats. As, as such, the structure as built is an eyesore, a blot on the landscape, and in my belief it should not be allowed to remain. The structure is totally unsuitable for the character of the surrounding landscape. It's visible from many directions I've just mentioned. Um, the background, in 2012, despite local process, uh, that a field immediately adjacent to Bowden Road in Malton was retrospectively granted planning consent as a recreation and training centre. Permission was granted to the organisation operating the facility but was temporary until 2017 so the impact of the facility could be properly assessed. In 2013 another permission was granted again despite local protests for the linear road course that we've seen the drawings for. Um, but the structure is built, in particular the solid climbing walls obviously do not conform to that planning consent. Um, the councils, I understand, uh, or the council officers, I understand, rightly required a retrospective planning application for the structure as built to be submitted. That application was considered and rejected. However, more than six months on, this is built back in um, January time, um, the ISO remains and Moulton is still blighted by this um, the structure we've seen and the organisation have seemed to have no regard for our neighbourhood. And I'll just point out the two retrospective applications and the need for an officer to recommend enforcement action seems to be proof of this. As a result, an officer of the Dunstanshire Council is now rightly recommending enforcement ac action. It matters not to my mind who we'd actually use in the structure. If it's the wrong structure, it's unauthorised, it's an eyesore and it should be removed. And so I sincerely hope you will join me in support of your officer's recommendation for enforcement action. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Mr. Perryman, who's the uh, Thank you. My name is Kurt Perryman. I'm the Managing Director of Adventure Ways, trying to support young people. Um, I put in plan permission for a linear road course, which is what you can see. I'm severely dyslexic and have a little pro problem with uh, putting these things together. So I asked uh, a consultant to put this together for me, and uh, the consultant did a which. On here, it clearly states that 
there was an option of a platform, an outstanding platform, to be added to that. We had the environmental agency come out to see me to say, okay, uh, also is on there is a power fan. And I said, oh, I don't want a power fan because they were worried about the noise implications. So I went ahead and put the, um, uh, the uh, platform up. And as you can see by these pictures, I've also painted green to try and fit in the environment. Mr. Scott um, <laughs> complains about everything that I seem to do. And there's also the monster monstrosity is what is put together. This is what is put together, okay, and pass that around to people in our area, okay, and very, very look at that, not no problem. The same people, the same people that complained about this, have asked my sister and I to come together to put a plan forward to try and sell the land for development. Now, that doesn't sound right to me, that one minute they're not happy with uh, the monstrosity, but they'll quite happily sell it for building work. My passion is about supporting and helping young people. Um, and that's what I'm here to do, and that's what I want to do. Um, I have seven staff members, four of which have all come through the ranks and helped and supported us deliver this. I work with disadvantaged young people. I work with a number of academies across the county. I work with a number of youth organisations around the county, all of which I'm trying to support. The police are supporting me. County Council supporting me. All I'm trying to do is help young people. Every time I try to do something, somebody knocks me back. Council asked me to put in for retrospective plan for it, even though I believe that it was actually already there. And they put it in their uh, paperwork that it was small print. But let me show you where it is. It's clearly stated I'm here, and I don't think that it was small print in any shape or form. Why, why is the platform important to us? The platform is important to us for developing young people. You have to support young people that have been disadvantaged, that are kicked out of school, that are challenging all the time, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm good at it, I'm great at it, and I'm passing people on onto work, placements, and other things that can take them forward. It is so, so important to what we do. As you heard from the uh, MP, he's uh, for it, he came out to see me. Councillor Shepherd came out to see me as well, and they're very much for what I'm doing for young people. Even one of the neighbours that complained about it said to me, Kurt, I think you're doing a great job, not in my back garden though. That's what I'm up against all the time. We have to be supportive young people. And the case being is the objection is GM1, GM2. If that is the case, that it's against GM1 and GM2, then the structure should not be there at all. Okay, I thank you and plead with you to, to help me support young people of our future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, no more member here tonight, so members. Hey, Councillor Fraction. I'm, I'm not entirely certain it might be in my area, depending on exactly where it is. Because um, I cover that, so uh, over on John Shepherd. Anyway, I, I wasn't aware of this till I read the, um, uh, the report, and I admire the work that the applicant has done. I think it's unfair of him to suggest that we're not supporting him because as I understand it, it went through planning the first time uh, and we, uh, I, I'm not sure I was on planning at the time, but it went through uh, against really the wishes of people because we felt that it was good to support young people. But like with all these things, there's always a an opportunity to go that little step too far and this appears to me to be a step too far and while I'm keen to support um, the work that these people do and the opportunities given to disadvantaged children I can't actually see that whether they abseil or not actually makes a great deal of difference to the outcomes because obviously he's been successful prior to this particular apparatus being installed. So I would like to um, uh, support officer's advice that enforcement is carried out. Thank you, Maurice, for the debate anyway. There is no debate, because yes. I'm agreeing with officers. Yeah. <laughs> the committee has got to agree with the officers. So they, they're they're entitled to, yeah. It's a proposal. It's a proposal. Right, do you have a second? I have no idea. Um, yes, I have a second. Councillor Abbey, yes. Um, but the second speaker is Councillor uh, Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, I was undecided about this. I read the report um, and I thought I'd wait to see what the structures look like. Um, but having
having listened to people speaking, this is not a permanent structure. It won't be there forever. It can be taken away. And I think, considering that the support that, that they get from county council, the police, uh, all the people supporting uh, young people, um, disadvantaged children, I really think we should not take um, this enforcement notice against this this uh, building. I really think it's not there forever. It's a piece of land. It can be the good that it's doing outweighs far the, the look of it. Um, and I really think we should not put this enforcement notice through. I can't propose it because I'm already proposed. But I, I, I just disagree with that. This is our Okay, thank you. So, Councillor Lee, did you want to say anything? Because you said you did it. I just think, uh, um, as um, the speaker said, you know, it, it, it is an answer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right, I've got Councillor Chanter next. Thank you, Chairman. Believe it or not, I used to be a rock climber. So I know about that signing. I know anybody who's never done it should try it. Because then you'll know what it is. However, I believe, sir, that you said that you had believed that you had permission for a platform from which our signing could be done. This is more than a platform, it's a wall. You could actually have a platform and outside from it without the wall. Having said that, it's actually safer with a wall. So I mean for two minds, but I do actually think that it's a difficult decision, but we will make a decision, don't we? Councillor Patrick. Um, yeah, there's something trouble to start. Uh, the, um, um, I understand that Mr. Perryman was given several options, one of which was to apply for a retrospective, retrospective application. But am I to understand that officers didn't like the, the idea of it being like that in the first place? So wasn't he asked being asked to do something which he knew what the ultimate outcome was going to be? <coughs> Basically, if somebody puts something up without planning permission, by planning two options, you either do nothing about it and see what the council does about it, or like a micro retrospective application. Now, obviously, I wasn't part of the discussions that were held, but obviously, we, we said, yeah, you can micro retrospective application. Obviously, what we don't say to put the micro retrospective application is we promise you we'll approve it. It has to be dealt with, obviously, on its merits, like any normal application, and on its merits, we refuse the The officers were perfect, perfect in order to delegate it because it didn't need to go to committee because of um, um, certain objections or not. Uh, the reason the bank was checked. Uh, Council Paul. Thank you, um, Chair. But again, for clarity, um, I'm cynically put down as anybody died, but take no notice of that. Um, one of the photos showed an amount of tents. Um, if it's uh, okay through, through you, Chairman, um, I'd be curious to know what those tents are being used for. Would it be a scout troop, an adventure, you know, um, Duke of Edinburgh adventure or, or whatever? Um, you were saying that you have seven staff, um, which I think bring in um, employment into a rural area is um, very commendable. Do you have, or again through you Chairman, do, do we have um, any numbers of the people that are going through this facility in the course um, of a period of time, let's say a month in uh, either one in summer or one in winter? I am reliably informed that those matters, two of those matters, are outside the planning. Lovely, thank you very much indeed, Jim. Um, the other point I would make is that I'm looking at that structure um, through a fence. And a photo has 
a knack of either shortening or lengthening distance, uh, depending on whatever lens, lens you use. Um, I am totally with officers, learn the professionals, I accept what they, they are saying, but two or three of the members so far have said that they were unaware of this, um, and I think perhaps a way forward, and I hate to use an expression, but I think the site visit and the deferment would be a preferable way. It's not a normal thing, a trail bed um, site well, no, it's not when, not. when pictures actually come well, through. Not so, so Chairman, Chairman, can we just be clear on this point, really? I mean, we've already refused plan commission for it. So, so really, that decision's been made. I mean, the thing what we're saying is that the fact that it remains in the world. That's, that's the real issue. Okay, I'll okay. Sorry, Councillor. I accept that. Right, okay. Well, the other proposition that the applicant, uh, that, that the enforcement action be taken as per officer's advice. All those in favour, please show. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Those against? One, two, three. Um, well, that's the enforcement office. Uh, the enforcement action will take place as per the resolution. Then. Okay. Thank you, members. That concludes the meeting.